always when we come to these far-flung places there's a theme that arises let's see if in listening to this little collage of stories some of them you may have heard before you can glean what the theme of our gathering over these next few days together is about. There was a priest. He was dedicated to the Lord and he served his parishioners well. But something was missing in his life. So he decided to visit a monastery, to go into seclusion, to see if he could seek deep within himself what it was that was missing. So, setting himself up in the chapel of the monastery, he sat in contemplation hour after hour. He meditated until the night fell and deep, deep into the darkness of the evening he sat and then within himself deep within himself words began to arise what am I leaving and then it became louder and louder. What am I leaving out? It began to bounce off the walls of the chapel. What am I leaving out? Inside and outside of him, the words were ringing and ringing. What am I leaving out? Until he became giddy. And getting up from his kneeling position, he staggered down the corridor where the rooms of the monks were and he knocked on the first door and a sleepy voice answered when he said what am I leaving out and the voice said me he went to the next door and he knocked on that door and again a voice answering his question what am I leaving out said me and then he staggered out of the door just as the dawn was coming up the sun was rising and he looked up at the sun and he said what am I leaving out and the sun said me he fell on his knees and put his head on the floor the earth and he said what am I leaving out and the earth said me. And then one day Mullah Nasruddin was sitting at the coffee shop when a stranger, a visitor in town struck up a conversation with him. The visitor was obviously a priest of some kind and after they'd spoken for a little while, the priest said, You know, I am in such an elevated state of mind that I never think of myself. I only think of others. And the mourner replied, Well, my state is higher than yours because I'm so objective that I see everyone as myself so I can afford to think of me. Mm. And then one day the Mola was visiting a far off land and as he was wandering the streets he suddenly realized he'd forgotten who he was. So he dashed into the nearest store and he said to the storekeeper 
Did you see me enter your store? And the storeman said, yes. And Mulder Nasruddin said, well, have you ever seen me before? And the storekeeper said, no. So Mulder said, well, how do you know it's me? <coughs> then one day, the Mulder found himself again in a far-flung place, and it came to night time, so he found himself a little caravanserai, as they're called, but a little dormitory guest house. And all the beds were lined up, but as he lay down to sleep, he was afraid. He was afraid in this far off place that if he went to sleep, he'd wake up in the morning and he wouldn't know who he was. So his neighbor who was sleeping in the bunk next to him could see his agitation because the mauler was tossing from side to side and his neighbor said, well, m what is it? Why can't you sleep? And the mauler explained, well, if I go to sleep I'm, and I wake up, I, I won't know who I am. And then his neighbor said, look, that's easy. Here, take this bladder, you know, something like a balloon. And he said, just tie it to your big toe. And in the morning when you naked wake up, you know it's you. So this is what the Mola did. He tied the balloon onto his big toe and he went blissfully to sleep. But his neighbor happened to be a, a little bit of a trickster. So in the night he took the bladder off the Mola's toe and put it on his own. So when the Mola woke up in the morning he looked around, where am I? Where am I? And there was his neighbor with the, oh, there you are. But then, and of course the neighbor woke up and Mola said to him, well, I can see that you're me, but then if you're me, who am I? And then the Mola met a man on the road and he immediately struck up a very intimate and personal conversation with him. They spent some long while speaking about family and philosophical matters. And then the Mola said to the man, <coughs> Well, who are you? And the man said, You mean to say that we've been talking in this intimate fashion for so long and you don't know who I am? And the mauler said, Yes, but you remind me of someone I know. And so the man said, How? And the mauler said, Well, it's, it's your beard and your turban and your face. And so the man said, well, who is it? And the mullah said, me. What could it mean when we put these little stories together? How is it that we can glean what the theme that is arising for us to explore over these next very few days that we're together. What do these little anecdotes 
mean for us when we put them together? We have a captive audience here because we're together. But maybe for you, see. And dear friends, Kelly and Lynn. And Lynn is a wonderful being who has brought us here because the invitation came several years ago. And so it's come about. But hugs are in order. Thank you.